Hello friends, welcome back. Today we're going to add labels to scatter plot circles. Um, so we, yeah, we've got our existing code on here and it looks like uh, this was our code from before. Um, and so yeah, we you can add text to create labels for the point in the scatter plot. The goal is to display the comma separated values for the first x and the second y fields for each item in the data set. The text nodes need x and y attributes to position it on the SVG canvas. In this challenge, the y value, which determines height, can use the same value that the circle uses for its cy attribute. The x value can be slightly larger than the cx value for the circle, so the label is visible. This will push the label to the right of the plotted point. Okay, so label each point on the scatter plot using the text elements. Okay, append text. Here we've got text, append text, using the text elements. The text of the label should be the two values separated by a comma and a space. Uh, for example, the label for the first point is 3478. Set the x attribute so it's five units less, uh, five units more than the value of the CX. Your code should have 10 text elements. We have data set, enter. Our, we've got our data set here, and it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, uh, yeah, okay. And the first label should have a text of 34. So yeah, append, so we go text, and then we pass in a function with a data point. We want to return the data point. I'm not exactly sure. I'm going to console.log data point just to see that it's working in here. OK, so we're getting our data points into here. And so uh, your code should have, OK. Uh, label each point on the scatter plot using the text elements. The text elements should be two values separated by a comma and a space. Um, so I guess we could return data point in a line like this, right? And uh, pass it in data point. Return the return it like a string, and set the x attribute so it's x units more. Okay, and now we're going to have to set the X and the Y out attributes. So, ATTR X is going to be equal to, well, we're really just going to have to do this function thing again. Instead of console logging it again, we're just going to say uh, data point. And... Um, Set the x attribute so it's five units more than the value you use for the cx. Well, for here, we're, we've got our data points reading out here, and we've got this is position zero and this is position one. So we want to do position zero, and we want to say it's five more. So five plus position zero. And then um, <clears throat> units more than the value you use for cx attribute in the circle. Set the y attribute. So we're basically going to do the same thing here, but we're going to set the y attribute. Uh, set the y attribute. Oh, cool, the numbers came up. Looks like they're all in a straight line, though. But yeah, this guy is close to this one, this one's 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 close to this one. So now we just need to set the y attribute. Set the y attribute the same way that's used in the cy value on the circle. Okay, so we come up here, cy value, it's h minus d1. So the data point at position 1, and we want to subtract the h value. And now our attributes are all the same. If we run the tests, they don't pass. OK. Um, you should have a text label of 34. Your first label should have a text label of 3478. 3478. An x value of 39. And a y value. OK, so our x value, let's console.log our x value our data point at position 0. And let's get rid of the data points here so we just see what's happening here. So we should have a position of 34. OK, so our first one has 34. Uh, instead of console logging at 0, it should ha have it here, 78, a value, and a y value of 422. OK, cool. So we want to look over here at our y value. Let's uh, console.log h minus data 
point at position 1. This should be 422, a y value of 422. Huh. Let's comment the console log out. I'm just going to pull this over for a bit better. Okay, the first label should have a text value of 3478 and an x value of 39. The first label should have a text of 3478 and x value of 39. Four twenty-two, and a y value of four twenty-two. Oh, the value needs to be four twenty-two. Okay, so we've got our data point of thirty-four. But we should say the data point at zero is thirty-four, and. Uh, Okay, so I'm going to actually do this a little bit more explicitly first instead of using this interpolation. interpolation. And then we're going to say plus a comma and a space, and then we're going to add a data. We don't want this to be a string. This is going to be like that. And then this guy at position 1, 3478. Okay, so the po this point is 3478, and it's at those values. So let's run the tests. Cool. That passes. All right, so yeah, I'm going to walk us through this and get rid of these console logs first. Now, this is all in vanilla JavaScript, and so this is a passing uh, answer for the test. First off, we say our text, we set our text up to return a string of the data point at position 0 and position 1. Well, we could refactor this, right? Instead of doing that, we could use these high ticks and use string interpolation. I'm going to pull this out just a little bit so we can see it better. And then we can use um, the money sign with the brackets, get rid of the pluses, and just add this in here. And then a money sign bracket, bracket here, and then we get the same result. So this just cleans it up a little bit, right? because instead of doing the, that, that other way, we're doing it this way. But um, one cool thing about this is we can, instead of using this function, this uh, vanilla JavaScript thing, we can strip this down and have a arrow function, which runs it the exact same way. And the arrow functions have this capacity for implicit returns, which means we can get rid of the brackets and um, make it a little bit more succinct like this. And now if we run the tests, it'll work. Same thing with this guy. We can get rid of the um, the function and pass in the arrow. We can get rid of the function and pass in the arrow. So now they're fun arrow functions. So they're ES6. And with that, we don't need the data point to be um, explicit or within parameters like that. And this still works. Okay, but still we have this return situation that we can get rid of and we can get rid of the implicit, and we can utilize the implicit returns of single line, single line uh, JavaScript, right? And so we can strip it down to this guy as well. And now if we run the test, it still passes. Okay, great. And, you know, everywhere in this guy, they're always using these abbreviated Ds, right? So instead of saying data point, we can say, if we change the one that we pass it in, and we just set it to D, then we're going to get the exact same results. And with each one of these, we set data point individually. So we can do the same thing here, 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 and here. And then we're still getting the exact same results. We're just refactoring our code. So from that giant big thing of code, now we're down to this, which I think is pretty much uh, as tight as we can get it. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and we'll see you in the next lesson.